Joining me today for a one on one is a man who is a pioneer, not only for the Minnesota Vikings, but in the entire NFL. In 1977, he became the first ever African-American punter in NFL history. Recently inducted into the Black College Football Hall of Fame, former Vikings punter currently serving as a sideline reporter for the Vikings Radio Network. I'd like to welcome in the legend, Greg Coleman. Greg, thanks for joining. Congratulations. Thanks, Gabe, man. It's, uh, it, it's great to be with you. And, uh, you know, as I was listening to all of those accolades that you were rattling off, and I'm saying, dang, is he talking about me? But, <laughs> you know, at the time, you never think about it. You never look at it from that perspective. So you get the call on November 16th that you're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Black College Football Hall of Fame. What were some of your emotions when you, when you got that call from Doug Williams? You know, I'm going to try and hold it together here <laughs> because, you know, when you when you think about it, and I'm reminded of what David Baker does, you know, when he knocks on the door of the men in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you know, when Randy Moss went in, when John Randall went in, when Randall McDaniel went in, Chris Carter, you know, just the name of the few great Vikings, when they got that knock on the door, how emotional it was. Yeah. And when when Doug Williams and and James Shaq Harris, the two founders, uh, of the uh, Black College Football Hall of Fame, when they called me, I got to tell you, it was emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, and a range, a range of emotions from left to right, uh, thinking back about the struggles of African-American men, uh, especially those two quarterbacks mm -hmm. and what they had to go through. Doug and I were teammates my final year in Washington in 1988, and we would sit in the cold tub and, and share stories mm. uh, because the focus back then was the black quarterback uh, and the black punter and black kicker was sort of put on a back burner. But uh, with this platform, I'm going to try and bring it to the forefront. Uh, which brings me to my next question. Do, do you think it's, it's a stigma that, you know, f for African-American athletes that they have to play a skill position instead of the punter position? Like, do you think it's a stigma to say like, all right, well, you can't play special teams. You got to find a position on the offense or defense side of the ball. Gabe, you just said the critical word, athlete, because most African-American athletes, punters, or kickers have other skills. That is the thing that uh, hindered me my first year because when I came out of FAMU, I was also uh, a hurdler. And so when I went to camp, uh, to, drafted by Cincinnati, when I went to camp, I outran everybody for the most part with the exception of Isaac Curtis and Archie Griffin. So Paul Brown says, God darn, man, with I well, light speed, we're going to try you at wide receiver. Well, I never played wide receiver. Then he switched me to defensive back, you know, and then I still had to compete. I'm saying, well, why ain't the other guys doing this? And it wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I knew that, but signed with Cleveland uh, the following year, ran the 40, uh, another 4-4, and Forrest Gregg says, God, Lee, man, you – you know, you got an awful lot of speed. And I said, time out, Forrest. I said, if you're going to put me at wide receiver and defensive back, cut me now. Because that happened in Cincinnati. He said, you know what? If all you want to do is punt, you'll be the fastest punter in the National Football League. So Forrest wow. Gregg gave me my shot. What was the goal to, to be, you know, a pioneer? Well, it kind of went hand in hand. Because, you know, in your in your high school yearbook, when they say, OK, your name, your hobbies, your ambition, all of those things. Well, I wrote years and years ago that I wanted to be a punter kicker in the National Football League. And my 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 teammates and classmates, uh, contemporaries, they laughed and said, man, you must be out of your mind. Ain't no black mm -hmm. kickers, ain't no black punters in the NFL. I said, well, that ain't my problem. And I had a coach at Florida a and uh, by the name of Pop Kittles. Mm -hmm. And Pop was my kicking coach. And Pop, one day we were at practice, and I was just thumping him down the middle of the field. And Pop said, well, baby, why are you kicking it right to him? I said, well, Pop, that's where he's standing. Mm -hmm. And Pop said, well, why don't you kick it where he ain't? And I said, what? He said, well, kick it where he ain't. Make him run for it. Kick it to the right. Kick it to the left. He said, and if you do that on a consistent basis, he said, baby, they'll mm -hmm. find a place for you at the next level. And I was and I was stupid enough to believe him. And that's when I started to craft mm. that skill of kicking to the corners. And I'll never forget uh, one of my first Monday night games when Howard Cosell coined me Coffin Corner Coleman, uh, because wow. that's all I did. I kicked him to the corners. So, <laughs> you know, at that point, when Howard Cosell knows and recognizes your name, you know that you have arrived. But to answer your question, it wasn't the ultimate goal to be a pioneer. Mm. 
but I knew that there had not been any before me. So uh, when you stop and take a step back and look at it, uh, it is pretty special. You, you were the first ever punter in the NFL, but since you, there's only been four African-American place kickers to ever play in this league. For you know, an African-American punter out there that's saying like, hey, this is what I want to do. Or Greg Coleman is the model citizen of an African-American punter. W what are your words for that person? Never give up, never lose hope. No matter how many doors get closed in your face, I believe that when a door is closed, God will open a window. But you've got to be prepared for the opportunity. And I'm going to do everything that I can to bring a light, to shine a light on these young men uh, who deserve a shot in the National Football League and in, and in colleges, especially HBCU. Mm -hmm. And just thinking, believe it or not, on the way back, uh, that I'm thinking about establishing um, the Greg Coleman Golden Toe Award for HBCU wow. uh, colleges for kickers and punters. Uh, I think I owe that uh, to HBCUs because Florida a and nurtured me. Uh, they matured me. They gave me the opportunity uh, to get a, a, a first-class education. Uh, it grounded me socially, and that's the least that I can do.